And what impact is the construction mafia having on South Africa's skill retention? Massive impact. I had a few discussions and some of the larger companies has even put this as one of the main risks facing their organization. You've got young graduates finishing school ready to work in this industry only to be faced with a war zone. Their lives are threatened. They have people storming sites that might be highly um, weaponized or they are threatened in their personal capacities. The level of extortion has come to such a point where they will even follow those individuals. If they know where they're working, they will talk about their wives or where the children are going to school. That's not what kids go to university for to face. They just want to do a, their, their job. So they go through the schooling, they go through the university, the training only to pick up and leave and go and work in another country where they can offer a safe environment for their own children. I don't, so if we lose those skills, and we are losing those skills, it's a massive risk. It's already, um, I think we can see the results if you talk to some of the organizations. It's very, very, it's a dire situation. Why is the situation with the construction mafia worse than ever? Budget cuts, I think across all government departments, they had a big budget cut to try and address the crisis of, of COVID. With those budget cuts, unfortunately, it has a direct impact on what money is available for expenditure or for rollout of infrastructure projects and investments in South Africa. So with less money, less projects, more companies fighting for those projects and with the higher unemployment rate, all those employees and all those community members with expectations. We find ourselves in a perfect storm, I think, which creates perfect opportunity also for these criminal elements to step up and see and where they can take advantage of a delicate and vulnerable situation. Why is a collaborative approach to the situation necessary and which stakeholders need to be involved? It can't just be the police and their special investigative unit that attempts to address this on its own. It has a direct impact on public works, Treasury has a big role to play in it, and then of course the industry, the civil engineering industry, the contractors, the employees and other interested parties in that. I think even the Department of Labor, has, Employment and Labor, has got a very good interest in, in what's happening. You can't fight this fight on your own. We can't start a war on those projects just between saps attempting with rubber bullets or whatever the case might be, or ending up in court with an interdict every time there's an unrest. There has to be a different way to, to address this. And that's why the bargaining council most definitely the, the view of this bargaining council is that everybody needs to start get together and have a discussion on this and see what can be done and how best to achieve it. Action is required but everybody needs to be on board. Everybody needs to talk about this and have an open discussion. We can't just shift responsibility to certain stakeholders or certain individuals. Everybody needs to bring their part and be able to, to talk about it and see how we can work together to solve this.